experience in business ownership and service to others has given her the drive and experience to collaborate with business owners and leaders to improve their systems, business acumen, and bottom line over the last 25 years. She served eight years in the United States Navy, managed high performance teams with IBM for 10 years, has owned a local in-home pet care business for 13 years, is a certified pet CPR instructor, we need to hear more about that, and a certified senior personal trainer. She volunteers with Faithful Friends Animal Assistant Therapy and serves on the board of directors for Second Chance Pets. Her passion for helping others in the community and in business led her to partner with her husband, Dennis, creating Results Extreme Business Solutions, allowing her the opportunity to share her gift of knowledge, experience, and altruism with a broader audience. Turn off your, I mean, turn on your speaker and let's put our hands together and welcome our speaker this morning, Tricia Stetzel. <laughs> and now turn off your speaker. And now turn off the speaker. All right, so this is going to be fun and interactive, and I'm going to ask for your participation in a few minutes. For those of you who took the assessment already, thank you. It will help as we go throughout the program. If you did not take it, I encourage you to go back and take it once we finish the program and more, more of the material that you see today will make sense. So what are our objectives today? I'd like to help you identify and appreciate your own behavior style, identify and appreciate the behavior style of others, and then learn how to adapt your behaviors to better communicate with others. Sound good? Knowing what we mean and don't mean is important in our discussion of personalities and styles. So an individual style behavior is made up of several different components. And I'll bet you would be surprised to see all of these pop up on the screen. Kind of scary, right? The good news is, although all of these make us who we are, we're only going to talk about what's above the waterline. So the things that we can see, such as the ship and the glacier here, are the things that we can see above the waterline. So when we talk about disk or dominance and compliance and steadiness and connectors, we're talking about the behaviors above the waterline. All of those things that I just showed you a minute ago are the things that are below the waterline that takes a much longer for us to get to know these people, all right? So the four things that we wanna find above the waterline when we're talking about DISC is how we deal with challenges and obstacles, how we influence others to our own point of view, how we deal with the pace of change, oh change, and how much we've had this year already, and also how we deal with rules and procedures. So there's no right or wrong answer. I heard someone say when they introduced themselves, I'm not sure if I have a split personality or not. I promise you don't have a split personality. We are all of some of these, we tend to have higher numbers in one or two of these. Some of you may have even, even split across three of these. What I want you to pay attention to on this chart is the thinking and feeling. So when we're looking at the top two boxes, which are the blue and the red, these are more thinking type behavior styles. And the green and the yellow, which is below the midline, are our feelings, more so. Now again, this is not 100%. I'm not telling you exactly who you are. This is all based on the words that you circled. And there are certainly more in-depth assessments that you can take to get more information about yourself. But this is really just the basics, all right? And as we look at the right side, we're looking at the red and the yellow. These are extroverted behavior styles. And the ones on the left, the blue and the green, are gonna be more introverted. 
So some of you may be saying, oh my gosh, I'm green and yellow. Yes, you might be, and that's okay. It just means that you behave in a different manner depending on what circumstance you're in. Remember those questions that I asked before about change and about challenge and about your point of view. That's where you're gonna use these behavior styles and you want to be able to adapt to other people's behavior styles as well because you're likely communicating with people that are in your own behavior style that you're used to communicating with. So we're gonna have more people oriented on the bottom half with the yellow and the green and more task oriented on the top with the blue and the red. Faster and slower paced, as you can imagine, the reds and the yellows, based on the description that I've already given you, are gonna be faster paced in general, and the blue and the green are gonna be slower paced. Now, one of the things I want you to pay attention to are opposites. Generally speaking, a green and a red are gonna be opposite behavior styles, just based on the information I gave you, okay? And the blues and the yellows are gonna be opposite of each other. So when we get to the end of this program, I'm gonna give you a challenge about your opposite. So be paying attention to which one that might be. Oopsie. All right, so some of you, and you know what color you are, are wondering how the overall population falls in general terms here. So what we're looking at is about 70% of the US population falls into the dominance style. About 38% falls into the influence or the connector style. 32% in the steadiness and 13% in the compliance area. And you might notice that it says conscientious on here, I think on my chart. This C could stand for a lot of words, but they all fall into the same type of behavior category. So now I have a poll for you guys. This is where I need you to participate. And restart it. Can't see that yet. On its way. All right, everybody needs to participate. Based on your self-assessment, which behavior style did you most identify with? And based on, if you didn't take it, based on the information I just gave you, you can at least give a guess. Almost there. All right, who didn't vote? <laughs> Got a couple people, holdouts. All right, I'm gonna share the results with you. I don't know if I move it over. Okay, so I can't move it over from the screen that you're looking at. So if you remember, red, in the general population was 17%. Here in this room, this virtual room, we're at 25%. And I could tell by all the red shirts and red jackets when we started. So what about the yellow? In our national average, it's about 38%. Here in this room, it's 29. For our greens or our steadiness, 32%. And here in this room, it's 21. And then for our compliance, we have tons of blues in here. And there's some interesting facts about uh, your profession or the business that you choose to be in. Will your behavior style will kind of guide you towards the type of business that you're in? And I saw that we had lots of blues in the room. So again, it could help guide you in the direction of what industry you might work in based on your behavior styles. If you're a numbers person or a compliance person or someone who um, loves facts and figures, you will likely be in that type of business. All right. Next slide. All right, one more poll. You guys ready? Here it comes. All right, when you see that apple that was on the screen, which group of words first came to your mind 
about the beautiful red apple that was on the screen. You got four groups of words. What came to your mind first when you saw the apple on the screen? All right, a couple of holdouts. <laughs> I know who you are. I don't really, it's anonymous. I might know who you are. Okay, here's some interesting statistics. Most of you at 67% said red, shiny, green leaf. Now, I will say, because that was the first choice, a lot of you may have selected that choice, but if you think about how many thinkers we have in the room are fact people. Are you surprised that we have 67%? Because I'm not. And then the delicious, healthy, crunchy is a kind of a feeling, or even the Snow White, Big Apple, childhood memory. There are some people that saw that as well. And nobody, surprisingly, said Apple. Are you guys all against Macintosh? I don't know. I know you're laughing over there, I see you. <laughs> All right, one more poll coming your way. All right, see this little guy and imagine you received a phone call from a friend to say that they have just been burglarized. I want you to look at the order of the two thought processes that I'm gonna flash up on your screen and I want you to select which set what you would react to or think initially based on the order that the words are in. So here it comes. I got a few holdouts. I know it's a lot of reading. Oh. All right, here come the results. So maybe a little bit of surprise here based on, so the top group of words are gonna be our thinkers, right? What happened? Do you have insurance? Do you need a logsmith? Did you call the police, right? All of the facts are first, where the second set of words, the feelings come first. And I know some of you said that you had a high feeler. Some of you have a high I or a high S behind whatever your dominant behavior style was. And that's probably where this comes from. Um, I will also tell you there's some interesting facts about DISC and the association to male versus female and the way those numbers come out. If you're interested in that, we can talk about it later, but there's some really cool facts out there around that. I know you guys are surprised, probably not. Let's dive into a little more detail behind each one. So for those of you who signed up early, I hope that you received your gift. If you didn't, I hope that you will go down to the chamber and get one because there's tons of information on this bookmark. And I didn't include it in these slides because I'd like for you to get this bookmark. On the front side of the bookmark, it's gonna give you words that describe each of the behaviors. And on the back side, it's going to give you tips on things that you want to do when you're encountering someone in that particular behavior style and things that you don't want to do. And I'm not going to go over those here because we're already speed dating. <laughs> so when we talk about dominance, the identifiers that we're looking at are 
lots of hand gestures. They may be a selective listener. They're definitely risk takers. And if you remember back in the first slide, your, um, these are gonna be your faster paced behaviors. They are emphatic in everything they do. They don't wanna spend time talking about your family most of the time. They really just wanna get down to what are the facts in a hurry. So our influencers or our connectors, they're identifiers, lots of facial expressions. They're outgoing, talkative, social. They're risk takers as well, but don't act as quickly as say someone who's in a dominance behavior. And our yellows or our influencers love recognition and being the center of attention. Not all of them, but some of them. If you're a super high I, this might be true for you. And we also love people, right? Steadiness for our greens that are out there. And we have a lot of them. You may have lots of family pictures, not only in your home, but in your office. Moderately low risk taker. Follow the tested proven rules. You're not super happy with change. Change is hard for our S's. We like things comfortable. We like to be in that space that we've always known and that we're comfortable with. And our greens bring balance to the people equation. What about our compliance folks? There are a bunch of you on the call today. Maybe me too. Introverted. Probably have a functional office. You don't likely have an office that looks like this. It is very functional. Everything that you need is right at your fingertips and it's very organized. You're gonna follow all of the rules and you're often worried or over worried and it may take C's a little bit longer to make decisions. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're just looking for an answer, the C's are not gonna be there to give you an answer right away. They need to go off and think about it. They're very analytical and they want to know the why behind everything. One last little tip here on behavior tendencies or just another functional way to look at DISC. So when we talk about the use of logic, our C's are going to be greater in that space and our I's are going to be lesser. It doesn't mean that they're overboard or underboard, but the use of logic is gonna be greater with a compliance type behavior. And in loyalty, we're gonna see our S's more loyal than our D's. Make sense? All right, our group activity is coming up. So I'm gonna put you guys in breakout rooms. It's gonna be six minutes. It's gonna take a couple of minutes for you guys to all get into your rooms. You're gonna go in that breakout room with people that have the same or similar behavior styles as you. For those of you who didn't take the assessment before, I'm just gonna guess and put you in a room. So just participate, please. The very first thing that you're gonna do is pick a leader or a spokesperson that will give information back to the group when we come back from the breakout room, okay? So you gotta pick a leader. And the very first question that you need to answer, that will be four, the very first question will be, how often do you have an empty inbox? And what I'm talking about here is your email inbox experience. And we all love email. So I'm gonna start putting the breakout rooms together. You guys coming back, how is it? Interesting. Yes. Interesting? Yeah, the reds are all the same. <laughs> As I suspected. <laughs> All right, so um, it looks like you guys, all of my, almost all my reds came back already. So who was your spokesperson in the dominance room? My D's. Um, it was one of the ladies, but I can't remember her name right now. It was me. enough, a bunch of eyes got distracted by other conversation. Yeah. <laughs> eyes never get anything done. <laughs> we were a mess. I love it. Okay. The so, Evelyn, <laughs> Evelyn, where you are a dominant uh, yes. spokesperson. 
Yes. Okay, so Evelyn, talk to me. It sounded like you guys all had the same opinion. So how often is, is the inbox empty? So we said um, inbox was rarely empty, just email is overwhelming, but we all agreed that we checked it. Like we had, um, most of us had all of our emails read almost immediately. So while there may be stuff in the inbox, it was read, um, sometimes filed and flagged. Okay. Uh, did you guys get the question about the emoticons? Yeah, um, that was a little bit mixed. I think the majority though said that they typically don't use emoticons depending on the person. Okay, and what about proofreading? Everybody said they proofread their emails sometimes three or four times depending on the audience. <laughs> okay, I like it, awesome. Yep. All right, what about, uh, what about my eyes? Somebody said you guys got distracted. We no. are talkers. We are talkers. We are just. We talk answered talkers. every question. We did answer every question. Okay. Okay. So, so Kat, you're talking, right? Yeah. Okay. Who's the spokesperson? I am. Kat okay. Clemens. All right. Talk to me. We don't. We in general do not have any unread emails ever. We don't, no, no one really likes the notification of having something unread. So we pr okay. we're pretty good about consistently checking emails. I would say um, about 75% of us con check them constantly, uh, where the other ones kind of let it go. If they get distracted, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We ha are split evenly down the middle on uh, using emojis. Half of us just love them and the other half do not at all. So pretty, pretty even split. Awesome. All right. Was it hard to pick a leader? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> yes it was. What do you agree? <laughs> all right. On to my S's, my study. Who was the spokesperson? You didn't get to answer everything. Oh. Dennis. Dennis was. Okay. All right. So okay. So for the C's, you're asking about the C's? I said S, but we can go with C's. Let's go okay. for it. So I, I jumped knowing, knowing that it would take us the entire time to figure out who the spokesperson would be. I just jumped in and said I would do that. Um, so as far as the inbox clearing it, I think everyone said we don't get it completely clear, but we do like to get it as close as possible. And if we don't get it as close as possible, we have we have a system for determining which ones are important, which ones you need to follow. So there are definitely rules associated with it. Um, the use of emoticons, very minical, minimal, like a smiley face when appropriate. But other than that, no excessive use of, of emoticons. Uh, all of us check our inboxes often. And when the question about proofreading, I think we're pretty universal. Yes, a lot. We have to read it all the time and make sure that it's right before it goes out. Okay. All right. Good. Are you guys seeing what's going on here? So if you're an I and you like to use emoticons, you're sending a message to What about my S's? Do we have a spokesperson for an S? Yeah, Tracy is. Tracy? Okay, Tracy. All right. So we, we had quite a little bit of variety and all the same. So on the inbox, everybody looked at their email and read it. Some people dealt with it once a year where they put it all in the folders where it belonged. Other people kept it completely there so they could always reference it whenever they wanted. So it ne only their unread was, you know, the most new, they could tell the difference. So we kind of went to those two extremes. Um, the emojis, we had some who had it as a cultural in their office. And so they used them there, but not at home. Others just didn't use them for my, uh, some of us use it at home and not in the office. So it seems to be for our group that it's whatever is appropriate for the uh, culture that you're dealing with. Okay, and how was it Tracy picking a leader in your group? Well, that's interesting. When we showed up, uh, Scott told us who the leader was. And then, then we needed to have a little help because we didn't see 
he picked me and then I said, all right, I'll do it. And then he had to ha take it over because I couldn't see some of the yellow, the blue balloons. So we all helped each other okay. be the leader. Wow. So it kind of falls into place, right? We've got our thinkers and our feelers and our introverts and extroverts as you guys listen to the answers that were coming their way. So Ava, don't kill me. I know that I'm over my time, but we are having so much fun. I just want everyone to know that this is my disc profile. The jacket was a farce. I am actually a very high yellow, high green. I have very low red and blue tendencies. My spouse happens to be a super high C. We are opposite personalities and we figure out how to make it work. By knowing your own preferences, you're gonna gain greater understanding and clarity into not only your own preferences, but other people's preferences. It's gonna make you a better communicator. So I know we're over time and I absolutely wanna hear your takeaways. I would like to make sure you get your homework first. So what I want you guys to do leaving this program is go find someone in your opposite behavior, someone that you wouldn't normally communicate with and at least three times over the next seven days, communicate with somebody in your opposite behavior. All right, Ava, I know you wanna kill me. It's already 9.53 and I, took up eight extra minutes of your time. If anybody has any takeaways or wants to reach out to me and have a deeper discussion about DISC, I would love to do that. I'm sorry that I took us over, that getting everybody into groups takes a little longer uh, than I had expected it to, but if you do have questions or you wanna connect with me, please feel free to reach out. I'm absolutely available and I love, love, love to talk DISC. Thank you. Look Ava. at that. Do you see that on the screen? Free 20 minute business checkup. Oh my goodness gracious. Everybody take that down. And if you don't take it down, reach out to us, reach out to the chamber and we will get you that information. And if you haven't taken the assessment, again, reach out to uh, myself or to Montea and we'll send you the assessment so you can take it. So you can be super duper clear as to what um, what you are. 